Have you ever had terrible chocolate covered strawberries? I know I have and it was not good. So today I'm gonna show you how to make the best chocolate covered strawberries, which means they taste the best and they look the best. Okay, they look pretty good, all right? <laughs> We're gonna learn how to prepare our strawberries so they stay nice and fresh, what's the best chocolate to use, how to actually make the chocolate covered strawberries and how to store them. It's all coming up next on The Sugar Geek Show. Okay, so the first thing you may notice, I'm in my new studio. I've got lights set up, I've got my background all done, my new oven. I promise there's a video coming talking about all the changes that I've done to the studio. It's like 99.9% .9 finished and I really wanna like include all of the fun details. So forgive me, that one's not quite ready. But today we're talking about chocolate covered strawberries. The first thing we wanna do is give them a bath. I know that sounds crazy and you're like, well, do I really have to do that? Well, every kind of fruit that you buy from the grocery store has like mold spores on it. If you've ever bought a canister of strawberries and noticed that they were molding right away, you know what I'm talking about. So when we wash our strawberries in a mixture of water and vinegar, it kills those mold spores and helps the strawberries to last longer. No, it's not gonna make your strawberries taste like vinegar, I promise, and it's so easy to do. These are just gonna soak in our wash for about 10 minutes. Then we're going to drain them, and you can even wash them off with more water if you need to, but it's not necessary. Okay, so now we're just going to gently dry these guys just to get that excess water really, really careful. We're not bruising them. You could wash these strawberries the day of, but you're going to have to let them dry. So that, that could take an hour. You could try putting a fan on them. It, if there's any water on your strawberries, it's going to leak into your chocolate and seize your chocolate. <laughs> so water plus chocolate equals no. <laughs> And you also want them to be room temperature because if your strawberries are too cold, then they condensate, which can also cause your chocolate to seize. And it, um, the chocolate also won't stick to your strawberries. I have a sheet pan here with just a cooling rack and then some paper towels up on top. And that is so we have airflow. And then I'm gonna put these into the fridge overnight or you know until they're dry. These are organic strawberries. So they're not going to be as shiny and resilient as a non-organic strawberry because pesticides, right? And that's just the truth of the matter. So if you're super, super concerned about your strawberries lasting more than two days tops, um, you might wanna just use non-organic strawberries. You can't have chocolate covered strawberries without chocolate, right? And everybody asks me, what chocolate is the best for melting? So I literally just tested every kind of chocolate that I had on hand. I'm not gonna show you like every single test I did cause it was a lot. But what I discovered is that you can actually use most chocolate chips, like high quality chocolate chips, and they melt down to a pretty good consistency. It's a little bit on the thicker side, but was still, you know, liquid enough that you could dip. And then I tested Baker's chocolate because I did say you can use chocolate bars in my Cocoa Bomb video. And it is in a bar form, but Again, super thick and not really ideal for melting or for dipping, really. It's only for baking. I also tested out lint uh, candy bars, which I've used for uh, cocoa bombs. It involves chopping. So, you know, if you're okay with doing some chopping, that's good too. But a lot of people are like, gosh, the chopping is hard on the wrist. So that got me thinking, if you're making a ton of chocolate sort of strawberries, maybe go with something that is like in chip form so you don't have to chop. You still have to be careful melting. Or if you're just making a couple and you wanna use some candy bars, you can go with like lint. And then the other one I tested out was the Guitard uh, Calais, Colettes. <laughs> and they worked really well for um, dipping and for molding. Um, you do have to temper it because it's not like a candy melt or something like that. And it, it's not too expensive and had a good shine. So that's kind of like my favorite for middle of the road quality, but not too expensive. But if you want to go like bonkers, really, you can use Calibo white Belgian or milk chocolate. That's these guys right here. They're in a smaller kind of chip form. So they're easy to melt and you don't have to chop. You do have to be a little bit careful. You don't go over that actual temperature. Um, but these I mean, this is like high quality professional style and you can get them in huge bags. 
like this one. <laughs> if you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, chocolate making or candy dipping, um, bulk is better. It's gonna save you some money. My number one choices are just the Calibo white, milk, or dark, just because they're already in chip form, easy to melt, good consistency, um, or the lint candy bars if you're not afraid of doing a little bit of chopping because the consistency is really nice and liquid, or the Ghirardelli chocolate chips. A little bit thicker, but still totally fine and very accessible. Most grocery stores carry them. Don't wanna be using anything like Baker's chocolate, almond bark, candy melts, cause flavor and texture is going to suffer. Okay, so let's go ahead and melt our chocolate. The process is exactly the same for the dark milk and white, but you just have different temperatures you have to work with. All of that is like tempering, right? And if you're new to this channel, you might be like, oh my God, tempering, what is that? Tempering just means that we're heating and cooling to certain temperatures. If you want to learn how to temper, like all of the information, you can click right here. But we are going to be talking about how to temper milk, white, and dark in this video. So stay with me. I'm gonna start with the dark, because that's the easiest. 30 seconds in the microwave, then do 15 second increments until I get to about 88 degrees, and then stir until it reaches 90 degrees. So this is after 30 seconds. Barely anything has started melting. Always wanna to stir to distribute the heat. So if I took the temperature of the bowl, that's 92 degrees and the actual chocolate is 81 degrees. And I don't wanna skim over the fact that I'm using an infrared thermometer. This is a, a thermometer that I love to use because you don't have to like poke it into the chocolate, you don't get chocolate buildup and all that good stuff, but you can totally just use any kitchen thermometer, an instant read, um, so that you can keep track of the temperature. I know you're gonna ask, do I really need a thermometer? And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, you need a thermometer. Because the difference between two degrees is so like exact, I mean, you, you need the thermometer. You wanna just like waste $100 worth of chocolate <laughs> for a $15 thermometer? <laughs> I have a link to this exact thermometer in the video description below. So the benefit of tempering chocolate in the microwave is you can quickly temper and uh, get to doing whatever you need to do. The downside of it is you really can't do a lot of chocolate at once, so if you are, making a huge bowl of chocolate for, um, you know, like a special order or something, you might wanna do the seeding method because then you can literally just melt a bowl of chocolate that's huge and then add the tempered chocolate back into that. But for small amounts, you just wanna do a few strawberries. Microwave is much easier, faster, a little bit more convenient. Let's say you accidentally go over. <laughs> if you're way over, then go ahead and just do the, the seeding method and temper your chocolate that way. If you're just like two degrees over and you still have a lot of unmelted chocolate, like I did here, I, this is my dark chocolate, and I'm actually at 91 degrees, I still have unmelted chocolate in here, so it's gonna be totally fine because that unmelted chocolate continuously brings the other chocolate temperature down and is technically reseeding the melted chocolate. So we're sort of doing like a half microwave <laughs> method here and half seeding method. So don't freak out. This is the downside to using the chips, like the Calibo chips, instead of like finely chopping chocolate, even though it's more work, it melts much easier in the microwave. With the chips, even though they're small, you still have to like wait for the heat from the bowl to slowly penetrate all the way through the chocolate chip. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for a minute because it's at 91 and I'm gonna let the heat permeate. All right, this is at 90 degrees. I'm gonna set that aside. Remember, you can do milk chocolate, white chocolate the same way. Milk can't go above 86 and white can't go above 88. This is Calibo Belgian white chocolate. Yeah, the white chocolate melts much faster because there's no cocoa solids. It's, it's mostly just cocoa butter, milk, and vanilla. And um, I have in my mind, my, th my microwave is like a thousand watts every five seconds is two degrees. So if I'm at 86, I wouldn't wanna heat this for more than five seconds. And the bowl is always hotter 
than the chocolate. Like my bowl is 96 degrees and this is 86 degrees. So I don't really wanna heat this up anymore. I'm just gonna let the heat of the bowl continue to melt it. And now I'm just chopping up some milk chocolate. This is my lint candy bars. I don't have any Calibo milk chocolate, so this is really nice. You can just get it at the grocery store. And then I'm just gonna melt that down the same way. Let's see how smooth that is. So I don't really like the taste of milk chocolate, but it's good to know that if you're using milk chocolate and it's just too thick, doing the microwave method to just go ahead and temper it. And now we can start dipping. All right, so we are setting up our chocolate dipping station. Once we start dipping, we don't wanna stop. <laughs> so we've got our strawberries ready, they're nice and dry. I have a piping bag and some scissors ready for doing some drizzling if that's what you wanna do, or you can use sprinkles or whatever you wanna to top your, your strawberries with. I have a piece of parchment paper where we're going to set our strawberries initially to kind of help them get rid of some of that excess chocolate. And then we have the final tray where they are beautiful and you can you know, transport them to the fridge or wherever you need to put them. We have our beautiful strawberry that's been washed and dried, no bruises, no blemishes. And we're going to take the strawberry by the stem like this, and we wanna dip it all the way up to the stem. So if your chocolate is tempered and thin enough, you should be able to just dip it right in there and everything will be good. But if you're feeling nervous about it, you can take two toothpicks and just go on either side of the stem in the top, like a little fork. So don't try to go through the stem, just go on either side of it. And then take the stem and hold it around the toothpicks. Okay, and then we're gonna dip all the way up to the edge of the stem because we don't want um, Wherever there's gonna be chocolate showing, you have the risk of it leaking. So you go all the way up to the stem, and then we do a little shake, just a little tap, kind of get that excess on there. And then we're gonna scrape just a little bit on the edge of the bowl. You don't wanna see any of the strawberry. We're just taking the excess chocolate off. And then we're gonna place it onto the parchment paper to set up for just a second. If you notice a lot of chocolate on the bottom, you can pull it up. See, there's a lot of, like a lot of chocolate pooling. Pull it up right away and then just move it over and that just pulls the excess chocolate off. And then when this dries, you can pick it up and put it back into your bowl. As you dip, your chocolate is going to get colder and colder. So you just heat it up to make it the right temperature again. So this is already down to 85. I'm just gonna heat it up for 10 seconds to get it up to 90 again. Don't ruin your temper now. If you work so hard to get it in temper. I think this is why people lean towards using the candy melts because you don't, just don't have to worry about, you know, doing all this, but it suffers in taste. So now I've dipped as many strawberries as I'm going to. I'm gonna transfer some of this chocolate to a piping bag. I say this for the end because the chocolate tends to harden in the piping, piping bag. So you don't wanna do it until you're ready. And we're gonna snip a very small hole. And I'm just gonna hold my strawberry over a bowl, get the chocolate going, and quickly, back and forth. We have our beautiful strawberry. And it just adds kind of like some nice texture, makes them look a little bit more professional. Totally optional though. If your um, chocolate starts hardening in your piping bag, you just heat it up for five seconds in the microwave. If you're making these for people, please wear gloves. <laughs> I am not wearing gloves because these are just for me. And just for fun, I'm gonna do some of these little guys with some sprinkles, nothing else special. 
All right, so after we're done with our chocolate, you wanna save the leftovers. We're gonna put it onto some plastic wrap. This is tempered, so the next time you use it, you can just chop it up and you'll have tempered chocolate ready to go. All right, and just set that aside until it sets. Wrap it up and save it for next time. All right, so now we're gonna put a drizzle on the milk chocolate and we're gonna be using just a little bit of the white chocolate and we're gonna add some cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is the liquid that makes chocolate liquid when it's been kind of warmed up. It's sort of like wax, but it actually like tastes good. If you want to color your chocolate, you can't use gel food coloring, like regular food coloring, because it's made of water. If you add even a drop of water to melted chocolate, it just seizes it up and makes it into a rock. So I buy my colored cocoa butter from Chef Rubber. They have a little place over in Las Vegas. They have tons of different colors and you, I mean, you can get a little bit and it lasts you a long time. You can use oil soluble powdered colors and color your chocolate yourself, but it might be, look a little speckled and grainy. So because this is real white chocolate, I'm gonna add some white cocoa butter. It's not gonna make it pure white, but it is going to lighten it up a bit so that it isn't um, like a super dark ivory color, which is important because when you start adding colors, if it's ivory, then it's gonna react with the pink and end up being more like a peachy color, and I want it to be pink. I heated my cocoa butter up for 30 second increments until it was melted. You don't have to worry about tempering cocoa butter um, if you're adding it to tempered chocolate, it's gonna be fine. All right, so now I'm adding in my pink and now it's ready to drizzle. So you might have noticed that as I added this cocoa butter to the chocolate, now it's a lot more liquid and that's because we're adding more of the liquid part of chocolate to our already melted chocolate. So. The good thing about knowing that is if you had a chocolate that was a little bit too thick, you can add uncolored, like just clear cocoa butter to that chocolate to make it a little bit more liquid. But in that case, you do want to be tempering it um, with your chocolate. It's, it's, the, it's the same thing. Okay, let's get our little guys here. So adorable. And our chocolate covered strawberries are complete. All right, so now that we have all of our beautiful chocolate covered strawberries, we wanna make sure that they last as long as possible. So as these strawberries sit in the fridge, they are going to um, kind of like sweat a little bit and that combines with the chocolate and slowly makes kind of like a strawberry juice, which over time just gets worse and worse and worse. Plus strawberries just dry out, you know? So when you put these in the fridge, you want to uh, keep them uncovered like this, or you could just lightly cover them with plastic wrap, but you don't wanna put them in an airtight container because that's going to trap the moisture in there. They like airflow. Um, it's also nice to kind of just keep them up on top of a cooling rack with, with um, paper towel underneath of them just to you know, keep them nice and dry. But even then, they say that you can keep uh, strawberries you know, in the fridge for two days, but I did that. <laughs> And granted, these are organic strawberries, but these are my strawberries that I've made two days ago. And I mean, they don't look terrible, but they definitely have been juicing. There's, you know, quite a bit of like leaky spots, wet spots. Um, there's condensation on them right now because when they come out of the refrigerator, they get lots of condensation on them. But after about, I'd say two hours or so, the condensation kind of dissipated and it was fine. Can you keep these at room temperature? Yes. You just don't wanna store them for more than 12 hours at room temperature because the life of the strawberry is going to be greatly reduced. So if you made these in the morning time and then you delivered to them at a wedding or a party or something, they can be left out, no big deal. Again, my advice is you can store them in the fridge for up to two days, but they're going to look their best right after you make them, like the comparison. There is no comparison. So wash your strawberries the day before, dry them off really well, dip them, and then serve them as soon as you possibly can for the best strawberry experience. So that is how you make the best chocolate covered strawberries. Hopefully you guys stuck with me through that whole thing, but now we're to the good part, we get to eat them. Mmm, mmm. Oh my gosh, that was so good. <laughs> you get like that burst of strawberry juice and like the crunch from the chocolate. It's like heaven, seriously. So anyways, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video on making your own chocolate covered strawberries. If you wanna go back to basics and learn all about tempering your own chocolate, 
check out this video here and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.